Hello! Today's video is on meiosis, especially focused for students that are heading toward a healthcare field. My website, Science with Susanna, has this blank drawing to accompany the video as well as practice materials to quiz yourself. Meiosis is cell division in the gonads, the ovaries or testes, that results in genetically unique gametes, eggs or sperm, containing only one copy of each gene. I will illustrate the key concepts with an example of an organism with only four chromosomes in its somatic or body cells. Human body cells have 46 chromosomes each, but as much as I love drawing, I'm not going to draw all 46 for you. In our example then, there are two homologous pairs. Homologous pairs are numbered in order of size, like these two pairs. Humans have 23 homologous pairs, numbered from biggest to smallest, except for the last pair, which are set apart specially because they are the sex chromosomes, and in males, they are not homologous. Our example has six genes, but there are two copies of each gene. We will indicate different genes with different letters, and different versions of a gene with capital or lowercase letters. So if someone has the same version of a dominant form gene for both copies, then we call that homozygous dominant. Homo means same, and dominant means that this form of the gene gets preferentially transcribed. Our example cell has a capital and a lowercase, so we call that heterozygous. Hetero means different. Two lowercase letters represent homozygous recessive. Our example may only have six genes, but the human genome has about 22,000 genes. I have to say about because we still aren't sure exactly the number, and they actually still fight over the definition of a gene. But we still get to have two copies of each one of those. When an organism has two copies of each gene, we call it diploid and write it as 2N. The N stands for number of copies of each gene. Think of it like a backup in case one of these versions doesn't work right. But even when both work fine, then it is handy to have such nice variation in order to produce genetically adaptable offspring. And that's what meiosis is all about, splitting each of these gene copies into eggs or sperm. As these cells within the gonads prepare for meiosis, they go through DNA replication in S of interphase just like all cells do before they divide. And, just like you've learned about in mitosis, the identical sister chromatids are held together by the centromere DNA sequence. In females, all of her oocytes get to this point while she is still in her mother's womb. I'm just speculating, but I think this happens because it gets all the eggs DNA replicated while they are young and fresh and haven't yet accumulated mutations that might increase their mistake rate during replication. Then they pause at this point of prophase 1 of meiosis 1 until the girl reaches puberty, after which meiosis happens every month when one egg gets to completely mature and be ovulated. Now the gonad cells line up the homologous pairs. This is metaphase one of meiosis one. During this time, the floppy ends of each sister chromatid can stick to the other copy of that gene on the homologous chromosome. The longer the arm of the sister chromatid, the more likely that those gene copies are to get swapped. We call this crossing over. In Greek, it's chiasmata for cross. This lovely chiasmata allows homologous pairs to exchange DNA. As if there weren't already a great deal of variety from each homologous chromosome's gene variations, this crossing over process makes it impossible that any two gametes ever produced throughout the whole of human history could ever be identical. During anaphase one and telophase one, the homologous chromosomes are pulled apart by spindle fibers into opposite sides of the cell. I didn't draw the spindle fibers though. Then cytokinesis occurs. So after meiosis I, homologous pairs are separated into two cells. Sister chromatids are still attached with the centromere, and notice that they are no longer identical after crossing over before the division occurred. Compare this with mitosis, which will separate identical sister chromatids in order to produce identical cells. Now a second division occurs, 
and each sister chromatid is separated into its own cell by spindle fibers that pull them apart at the centromere. Once again, I've simplified the process, but you should know it includes a prophase II, metaphase II, anaphase II, and telophase II. After meiosis II, the sister chromatids will have been pulled apart. You end up with four haploid cells, one N. Haploid means each gamete only has one copy of the gene. These cells can find their homologous partner at conception. One egg is fertilized by one sperm and a 2N baby's genomic DNA is produced. Indeed, you are a precious diploid combination of gene versions from your mother's egg and your father's sperm. In summary, meiosis only occurs in the gonads. It includes two divisions, not just one like mitosis. Four cells are produced, not two cells like mitosis. And these four cells are haploid, 1N, not diploid cells like mitosis. And the four cells are genetically unique, compared with mitosis, which produces genetically identical daughter cells. You may find it useful to re-watch my video on mitosis so that you can feel confident of the key differences between mitosis and meiosis. Now spend a few minutes reviewing this information, make sure you understand it reasonably well, and then use my Quizlet flashcards to practice and review. See you in the next video.